Konu futbolu tahmin etmeye gelince her taraftar kendini bir uzman zannedebilir. İster ofisteki bir iddialaşmada, ister fantezi futbol ya da bahiste on ayaklı maç oynamak olsun. Nothing feels better than nailing a prediction. But if we're honest, that doesn't happen too often. France at the Euros anyone? Belgium even? We had Belgium as the predicted winner. But what if you had access to vast resources of statistical data? which then you could punch into an AI technology system which would then churn out hundreds of thousands of match simulations. Bu beyin gücü epey yardımcı olabilir. Ancak veriler, algoritmalar ve yapay zeka etkili bir şekilde futbolu tahmin edebilecek mi yoksa hepsi sadece eğlence için mi? Let's take a look at Euro 2020. A few companies attempted to forecast the whole tournament with differing results. Let's check out their methods and see what they got right and wrong. Analiz şirketi Stats Perform bir süredir büyük turnuvalar hakkında tahminlerde bulunuyor. Ancak Euro 2020 için taraftarın katılımını artırmak amacıyla kardeş internet sitesi olan The Analyst de canlı etkileşimli uygulamayı devreye soktular. The company itself works in team performance, fan engagement and and betting. For us it's really about that fan engagement element. So so we we are always going to use it to try to give fans uh, you know something new. Her takımın Avrupa Şampiyonası'nı kazanma şansını belirlemek için kendi takım sıralama sistemlerini, istatistiksel verileri ve bahis oranlarını birleştirip yapay zeka programlarına yerleştiriyorlar. Every time that we make a simulation, we're running this model uh, 100,000 times to make every prediction. So we're then looking at what's the, you know, the variance in probabilities that come out over those 100,000 simulations for every team. France came out with a 20% probability. That was the most consistent prediction that we got from that simulation. Anyone could have predicted France as the champions, you say? True, but they didn't even make it past the round of 16. So that prediction was definitely a fail. Bununla beraber Stats Perform başka tahminlerde de bulundu. Danimarka'nın yarı finale kalması öngörülen çalışma sayesinde onlara 4'te 1 oranında şans verdiler. Free tournament, I mean, people questioned it for sure. Um, but I think we had we had ways of explaining that, that that hopefully made people understand that this isn't something that's based just on a team ranking. It's based on kind of the, the conditional probabilities of meeting a team in the, the round of 16 or, or, or the, the quarters or, or the semis. And, and certain teams just had more difficult paths. Başka yerlerdeki sonuçlar sayesinde İngiltere'nin finale giden yolu gelişme gösterdi. Stats Perform modeli şans ve tahminleri buna göre güncelledi. That certainly changed when Spain didn't win their group. Um, so, so for for Spain to not end up on that side of the bracket, it made England's path quite a bit easier. Once they beat Germany, um, it really opened up for them. So their their their probability to reach the final, I think, was highest after after the round of 16. Even investment bank Goldman Sachs got the football fever. It is really a bit of lighthearted fun, I think. You know, we, we, we enjoy watching football. It's a, it's a good atmosphere. Clients like it. Um, you, you get a lot of different interactions. They developed a statistical model using 40 years worth of data from more than 6,000 matches. And they also developed a formula which ranked each team's home advantage, momentum and their historical record in past tournaments. Ayrıca modelleri bir takımın dünya futbolu ilo derecelendirmelerine de ağırlık verdi. Bu karmaşık formül takımları sonuçlara, rakibin gücüne, gol farkına ve maç durumuna göre sıralıyor. We estimate this and use basic statistical analysis to determine the coefficients, the significance and so on. So what we found there is that really the relative ranking of teams, these ELO scores do very well and do for example better than, than the simple FIFA ranking. I mean the ELO scores come from chess of course. Um, So they already have some sort of implied probability when two teams play against each other. What's the implied probability that one team would win versus the other? Their model also simulated every match 100,000 times. 
ve bu sonuçları kullanarak tüm turnuvayı simüle etme zamanı geldi. We simulate the entire competition and then go forward. So you know, go through the competition and like that, simulate the competition 10,000 times. And from there, you can get a probability distribution across teams of reaching quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, winning. Goldman Sachs modeli Belçika'nın finalde uzatmaların ardından Portekiz'i 2-1 yeneceğini öngördü. Oldukça basit bir nedenden dolayı bu tahmin boşa çıktı. I think Italy was the reason that that that went that that went wrong. I, I mean, the, the the initial reason is very simple: why why why we had Belgium as the predicted winner. And they're currently the the highest rated, at least according to the ELO scores, the highest rated European team. These ELO scores have huge predictive power in the model. Ancak Goldman Sachs yüksek ilo derecesine rağmen Fransa'nın erken eleneceğini tahmin etti. Sadece birkaç taraftar ve uzmanın beklediği bir şeydi. Bu kısmen Goldman Sachs'ın her takımın önceki 5 maçının analiz edildiği ivme sıralaması yöntemine bağlandı. The momentum for example was, was quite important. So France came into it with not very strong momentum and so we had them we had them in a in a more in a more difficult um, on a more difficult path through the euros so so that was the reason why the model predicted they would they would uh, exit in the in the in the round of uh, 16 and goldman sachs's prediction of england beating germany in the round of 16 well that was also bang on the money i mean one of our key predictions going into the the the, the tournament was that that england unfortunately would beat germany at wembley um which you know hurts but um but that that turned out to be right historically speaking the the home advantage makes makes a big difference for the for the final we have england winning in extra time uh it's a very very tight match according to the models so that we have a 58 probability for england okay. um and yeah. if you remove the home advantage from england then uh the model would actually predict that italy wins so really uh it probably it takes takes the whole country to make to make England win to carry England over the line. Elbette İtalya evinden uzak olmasına rağmen İngiltere'ye karşı penaltı zaferiyle Euro 2020'yi kazandı. Fransa erken elendi. Ardından Portekiz ve Belçika'da. Romelu Lukaku turnuvaya girerken çok iyiydi. Peki ya İtalya'ya karşı iki basit golü kaçırmamış olsaydı? Bu Goldman Sachs'ın modelinin muhtemelen öngöremeyeceği bir şeydi. There are just so many different permutations in football that you can get from from player level data. Then, of course, as you say, early red cards, players being injured, um, perhaps a you know wrong referee decision, some, some, something something like that. This is this is incredibly incredibly difficult to model. Football, of course, is full of what ifs. That's because there are just so many variables which are out of anyone's control. You've got the added elements of of injuries and. And red cards um, and, and just uh, you know human elements, right? Like referee decisions or mm -hmm. or coaching decisions. If Southgate plays with a back five and hadn't played with a back five for every every match that was in our data set, you know that, that's a that's a different team. And in a tournament format such as the Euros, especially where four of the best third place teams go through to the knockout rounds, any one game can affect the statistical chances of multiple teams. You're not just simulating the game that's happening, you're also simulating every other game and every other probability uh, every time a goal happens or a red card or something happens in a game. So what is the future of these statistical models or AI predictors? Can the technology or the database really improve to a degree where forecasting entire tournaments is possible or at least more accurate? Football, it seems, will always be particularly hard to predict for one simple reason goals or a lack of them. Football is, in my opinion, from a statistical perspective, inherently difficult to model because it's quite low scoring. So the most, the most frequent number of goals scored is zero. And then it drops off very quickly after two or three, right? And so the variation you have in the data when you try to, for example, if you use our modeling technique to model the number of goals that each team is scoring, there's not that much variation in the data. Goldman Sachs relied heavily on goals scored and goals conceded in order to calculate a team's momentum as well as how to measure their home advantage. So, would more data actually be helpful? To, to look ahead, I, 
more data, of course, of course, is, or I, I would I would imagine is is helpful, but that brings its own difficulties, because with with some of these techniques, if you have too many explanatory variables, you're really overfitting the model, for example. So then you need to go into more things like machine learning, perhaps artificial intelligence, some areas like that where you can use vaster amounts of data. Stats Perform, yapay zeka teknolojisini kullandıkları için kendilerine daha çok güveniyor. Onlar için sorun veri eksikliği. Örneğin futbol kulüplerinin yayınlamak istemediği sakatlık verileri gibi. It's definitely the hardest part is, is that kind of player availability piece and it's something that will really only improve as the data becomes more available and becomes more, um, you know, something that we can rely on. The AI capabilities um, and the technologies that we use to make, to run our simulations and to run our predictions will always only improve. Um, but you can only ever make predictions on good data and, and reliable data and the, the better the quality of the data you have, the better the predictions you're going to make. I'm not sure whether whether that will necessarily improve these models, but I also wouldn't be surprised if, if it did. I think that the difficulty is A, very low scoring, and B, so many different permutations. Football, regardless of the data or technology available, remains unpredictable. After all, how could AI or statistics possibly foresee, for example, Gareth Southgate subbing in two new penalty takers with just one minute left in a Euros final? Peki, İtalya'nın kararlılığını ve takım ruhunun önemini nasıl tahmin edebilirler? Wembley'de düşmanca bir kalabalıkla karşılaşan İtalya bunu ekstra motivasyon nedeni olarak kullandı. It is exciting to watch because it is so unpredictable, I would say. Perhaps the data will get better and become more readily available. Perhaps AI technology will improve. But the beauty about football is that anything can happen on any given day. That's why we love it, and that's why it will always remain the world game. Mm.